So, from this position here, we have a 3 8 weld plate. We have a 60 degree transducer. Calculating out that V path gives us a 1.5 inch V path, which is this blue distance here from boom to boom, 1.5 inches total. If we were to cut that in half, and give us a 0.75 inches for one leg, meaning anything on our A scan from zero to three quarters of an inch, we are inspecting in our first leg, and anything from three quarter inch on to an inch and a half is in our second, so on, repeating on and on. So looking at our A scan, we have an indication with a screen path distance of 1.125 inches, when we have a three inch range here, that's going to be somewhere around the 30-ish percent mark. I tried to be as precise as we could, but I digress. The uh, important thing to note here is that our defect is at 1.125 inches, which is at a distance beyond our first leg, but not yet beyond our second leg. So we are somewhere out in here. And the reason for knowing these formulas, knowing the way that this math interacts and how the sound moves is if we were to calculate out our skip distance, it'd give us some distance, you know, and knowing that distance for us could give us some frame of reference, really, I guess, for where our position is for, you know, when I have the beam exit point here, it is, boom, reflecting right here on the crown. And a good thing to know about that is half of that then would be the position where I'm sending sound straight to the root, you know? So just, if you've ever taken a blueprint reading class or if you've ever been given a blueprint and kind of had to scratch your head for a little bit about what that thing was supposed to come together and look like until you started to get it assembled and then bing, it just hits you like a ton of bricks. That's kind of what um, I see a lot of people fall into with just looking at an A scan and scrubbing back and forth, raster scanning on a weld plate. Doing this and drawing this out and kind of building that picture helps a lot with on the fly, kind of getting quicker and more repeatable with your inspection. So to calculate out that depth here, we are going to take the screen path distance times the cosine of our angle, which in this case is 60. And that screen path distance, let's plug in 1.125. Make sure you hit equals there. 0.5 is the answer of the cosine of 60, not the answer we want, but we have 0.5625. Notice that is larger than our material thickness. That's not right because the instrument does not know. Ooh. Garrett. That is because the instrument does not know, or just the bare A scan in my eyes and the math don't know that this material stops here and we have a reflection here. It actually thinks that this sound goes, let's switch up here to blue. It actually thinks that the sound keeps going like that. It doesn't know that it makes this reflection there and comes up into this. So that is why we have to do that subtraction for the material thickness. If you were to imagine with me, if you will, and forgive me, this is about to get ugly, but uh, imagine with me, if you will, we took this and kind of flipped it over. Now I know this is not to scale, um, but I'm trying my best here. Um, take this and kind of flip it over. 
then when I take this depth measurement from here down to here, that is what we're talking about. Because if we're familiar with sine, cosine, and tangent, right? This is what we've got. We've got the hypotenuse, here is the adjacent, and here is the opposite. Opposite of the hypotenuse, adjacent to the hypotenuse, okay? When I know the opposite and the hypotenuse, and that angle, I can find the adjacent. That is what we're doing with the sine. That's why when you do your surface distance to a reflector, that's why you use the sine, because that is the surface distance to the reflector. That's what you're solving for is the missing link here. I know the angle of the opposite hypotenuse. I can find the adjacent. So with cosine, I know the adjacent and the hypotenuse, and I am trying to find, you guessed it, the depth. So this triangle, notice, is here, right? It doesn't know that we reflect it off of the surface here. So we have to subtract 0.375, and that will give us some number, minus 0.375. 0.875, interesting, this is going to get fun. 0.1875. Now, that measurement, we have subtracted out of material thickness. That means we have gotten rid of this portion. That measurement is from here to here, which is the bottom of the plate up to the defect. So we go again, minus 0.375. And weirdly enough, folks, that is going to give you Do the same thing. <laughs> I calculated for a defect that was dead center. So notice defect dead center. Hopefully that made these calculations make a little bit more sense and kind of the why we have to do what we have to do. If we were to clean that up and do it a little more simply, here's how we would do it. We would say that we had ourselves a weld plate here beautiful weld plate not a problem at all and our transducer sending sound bow we calculated out using a 60 degree at 0.375 we found out that our v path was 1.5 inches however the defect that we found was only at 1.125 inch and that's screen path distance. That's what's happening here on the A scan. From the initial pulse, out over, put my gate over it, I get a measurement 1.125. Sound path distance. The instrument doesn't know, or the math, I guess rather, doesn't compensate for the fact that the material stops here and we reflect. It thinks that the sound just kept on going. Now, we have to subtract out a material thickness to compensate that after we calculate for our depth. However, getting rid of one material thickness essentially gets rid of this. We flip it upside down. Now we're measuring from the bottom up. So I saw some folks on the calculations not um, realizing that or not knowing that. It might not have been clear, but. Um, hopefully it is now, and so we have to go again in order to get the measurement from the top down. And when you get into phased array and looking at S scans and sectorial scans of welds, this knowledge right here that the instrument and the sound carries it like this instead of automatically knowing that there's a reflection that occurs, this will make a lot more sense when you get into phased array if you have this idea down. So, as always, keep in touch. Give us a call, email. We'd love to talk to you and walk through this stuff.